I'm Mike Lansman and welcome to another video tutorial. This video tutorial will deal with creating a clipping mask in Adobe Photoshop. Let's examine what a clipping mask is and how it can work for you. What I will do is I will invoke the type tool and I will simply click anywhere towards the left edge of the screen to create an insertion point for text. We can see that there's an insertion point for the text by noticing the flashing cursor and what we will do is in this example we will type in the word zebra. I now would like to increase the size of the text. Now Adobe have been exceptionally intelligent about how we can resize in Adobe Photoshop. It is called a scrubby slider which is located in the options bar. That is the scrubby slider where you notice the small t and the big t. We do not simply want to pull down from a list. We cannot set the exact size if we're just pulling down from a list. We need to resize this content relative to the document. So one of the ways of doing it is to put the cursor over the big T and the little t and you can see the finger with an arrow showing on either side. This means that we can scrub the type bigger or scrub the type smaller. So we will make this text really large and there you have the text. I now take the move tool and move it over the content. Now what a clipping mask will do, it will clip the image content into the type. What we need to do is to change the stacking order of these two layers. So we will drag the bottom layer to the top and you can see not possible sign because you cannot change the stacking order of a locked layer. What we would need to do in this instance is to double click anywhere around this area. We now get a dialog box saying that it's going to create a new layer named layer zero. We go ahead and click OK. The layer is now unlocked. We are now able to change the stacking order and you will notice that you get a solid line when the stacking order change has been achieved. Now, be careful in this next step that you don't go and change the stacking order again. What we want to do is to position the cursor just to where the two layers meet and hold the Option key or the Alt key. You will notice the cursor has changed shape. When you see that change in shape, you simply click and you have achieved your clipping mask. Now what we're able to do is to select the image layer, select the move tool, and we can now move the image around the type, or we could take the type tool and move the text around the image. What we can now do is to add a layer style. A layer style is located at the bottom of the layers panel, hence the layer style. It is an effect that we're going to apply to this type layer. Clicking on the FX for layer style, we could add a bevel and emboss. We will now see that we have achieved the bevel and emboss. We could increase the slides slightly. And there you have a clipping mask with some styled type. So what can we do with this? Well, assuming we were to use this as, for example, a title slide in PowerPoint, we could go save it as such. First thing we would need to do is to save it as a JPEG file. We would now have to go under the layer menu 
and you're just missing it on your screen, but it's flattened image, which flattens it all, we will take the crop tool and we will crop just the image as required. And press enter. We would now need to save this. So we will go File, Save As, and we can save this in any location of our choice, and we will call this clippingmask.jpg, and we save that out. We now head over to PowerPoint, and we will go and insert this image as our title slide. Insert Picture. It's now going to request the location of our saved image. We know that we've put that into documents and we've called it clippingmask.jpg. So we have now used Photoshop to complete a design for use in another application. Just one additional use of how we could use the clipping mask. Another way that we could use this would be if we were to merge these two layers, you've just seen what Flatten does. Flatten, flatten the two images, the two layers into one locked background. However, if we merge, we do this when we have achieved our final result using one or more layers by selecting both the layers. How do I select the top layer? I will hold the Shift key and click on the top layer, both layers are now selected, and we could now invoke the command to merge these two layers whilst still retaining transparency of our background. We go layer, merge layers, or command plus E. This has now become an image on a transparent layer. So just to take this concept a little bit further, we could navigate to the bottom of the Layers panel and create a new layer. On a Mac computer, you can hold Shift Command plus N, which will also create a new layer. On this layer, I might, for example, want to use a gradient. I would choose to use the black to white option as a standard and I might choose the radial gradient. Radial meaning round. So if I draw from the top left to the bottom right, you can see the radial that it is a rounded gradient. We see the roundness of the gradient. All we would need to do now is to change the stacking order and we're now building up a collage where further images could be copied and pasted into this image. I hope this has been useful to you, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching.